Welcome to the first installment of the Bonna Beat. We are here at Grand Slam Grill. I'm Robert Barbieri, your host, and the Bonna Beat is a weekly sports show where I'll be talking to the Olean Times Herald men's and women's beat writer J.P. Butler and Cameron Hurst. Uh, the anticipation is over. The month-long, uh, you know, wait. Uh, I couldn't wait to get this going. We've been talking, you know, over the, the past month. We put out that video uh, before the break, and it's finally here, the first show. How does it feel for all three of us to finally be in the same room talking basketball? I don't know about you guys, but uh, <laughs> I, I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, break, right. I've been wanting to talk on a basketball with somebody, and I haven't had you here to do that, so I'm glad that we're finally able to you know, get a chance to, uh, to get together to, to, to do this, to hopefully provide some insight on what's going on with both Bonner basketball teams and uh, have some fun. Yeah, and absolutely. And there's a lot to talk about right now. We're right in the thick of A-10 play. Right. Uh, so you know, it's like, going to be fun. Like you guys are saying, we're right in the thick of it. First things first, we'd like to thank the, thank the Jan Doley School. Uh, with all these guys, uh, we wouldn't be able to produce this show. Uh, now let's get to it. Let's get to a little bit of recap. You know, before we left, <laughs> both teams are kind of, you know, below 500. Uh, the men's team, you know, kind of a step back from the year before. The, the women's team still, you know, trying to find their groove. Uh, JP, give us a little 30-second uh, recap of, you know, then to now. 30 seconds is going to be hard for me because I was <laughs> go on probably way longer than I need to. But, you know, so much has happened since, since that day that we sat down and did that little teaser video uh, with the men's team. And, and I've been trying to think about, okay, what's the thesis statement to sum, you know, everything up over the last really six weeks here. And, you know, I think it, it's, it's, they got worse and then they've gotten <laughs> better. You know, there's the five game losing streak, which we're really unaccustomed to seeing right. kind of culminating with that blowout loss to Syracuse and then the, the A-10 opener against George Mason, where uh, it was really kind of the encapsulation of their struggles to close games it was another example of that but but really since then you know kind of coinciding with one becoming healthier and two seeing these freshmen starting to come along they've gotten better you know they've won four out of their last six um, they had that double ot home loss to dayton where they where they had a chance to to pull out that game against one of the better teams in the a10 it was encouraging even though it was a loss and then you've got back-to-back -back road wins for a, you know a young and the first two road coming to the, the first two road right. wins of the season, and so now you're starting to to see the growth. Now they're they're starting to look a little more like the team that that maybe they thought they could be in the preseason, and that fans thought they could be going into the year. Right, and you know one of the biggest things I think for Bonaventure basketball, especially when it comes to the men, is that people expect excellence every year um, you know we've been very fortunate over the past couple years having 20 plus wins especially last year on the run that we had um, you know having a pro in Jalen Adams and Matt Mobley uh, you know manning the backcourt uh, this year we all kind of knew it was a little bit of a step back um, you know uh, freshman younger team uh, but you know like you said uh, we're, we're starting again the groove of things and I think uh, you know with time this team will only get better um, as you know we go along and as we continue doing this show I think uh, it's going to be great to you know, unravel where this team ends up yeah. and come March. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, it, it isn't uh, uh, what Bonna fans have, like we said, become accustomed to. It's almost like we've, we've gotten a little spoiled with right. three straight 21 seasons. Uh, you know, what they did last year, winning a school record 26 games, beating UCLA in the NCAA tournament. Um, but I think there was that level of just sort of, uh, knowing what it was going to be this year, that it was maybe going to be a little bit of a bridge season, having lost guys like Jalen Adams and Matt Mobley, being so young, going through the injuries early, there was a little bit of kind of accepting, you know, of what it was going to be. And so it's not, you know, maybe in past years where if you lose uh, some of the games the way they have, that it's the sky is falling kind of thing. It's just sort of, um, you know, accepting, hoping for the best, waiting to see what's going to happen at the end of the year here, all while seeing, okay, they've got these young guys that maybe it's not all coming together right now, but you can see it. Right. And, and at some Definitely. point, it's going to start to come together for them. Now, Cam, let's get into a little bit about the women's basketball. Uh, give us a little recap uh, about how the season's going so far. 
Well, right when we filmed that teaser, uh, the women had had broke a losing streak and, and had just you know had a nice, had a very nice home win against uh, Siena, right. um, and you know took Penn State uh, in you know deep into the the fourth quarter of play in the second half. Um, that that loss against Penn State started a five game losing streak that um, finally was you know cut. Uh, it, with a huge comeback against George Mason um, in the second game of Atlantic 10 play. Um, very similar to the men, you know, this is a very young team. Um, McKenna Maycock is really their only senior, uh, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, stepping up and, and, and leading the charge. But you're seeing the development of two very good, um, very talented guards in Deja Francis and Asian A. Johnson, who are ranking right up there. Um, second and third in Atlantic 10 women's basketball scoring, um, so they you know they've they've kind of taken over. So what we're seeing is, you know they, they've they've struggled, they've had their struggles. You know they you know Jesse Fleming told me early on in the season we're not hiding from the non-conference schedule that we had um, because it's only going to make them better come time for a 10 play, especially this year um, where the Atlantic 10 is completely wide open um, in women's basketball. Jesse told me you know yeah he's he's never seen a year like this where any team on any single night uh, can, you know, can, can get the win. Uh, so, you know, it's a lot of development. They're just coming off of a very nice, you know, right now, 64 to 63 win at UMass on Saturday. They got kind of hitting that shot with 41 seconds. Right, really, and getting, uh, and getting two away. big stops right. on an opposing court. So, you know, they, they'll, you know, they'll move forward. Um, but you're kind of seeing the youth movement kind of take over, and you're getting some key contributions from, uh, from you know Deja Logan and Emily Calabrese and Amanda Oliver. So you know we'll see. They, they there's a lot of work to do, but um, obviously it's it's similar. This year isn't the year. They're looking ahead to the next two or three. Right, and you know, there's a common theme that uh, you know both of you guys discussed is the the young core that uh, that both teams have. Starting with you, Cam. You know, you look at. Asian A. Johnson and Deja Francis, right? In the 19 games that they've played, uh, both of them have combined to be the leading scorers 11 of those 19 games, right? right? Uh, they're clearly leading the pack as far as that is concerned. Now, talk about that. Well, how is that? Uh, well, what's the atmosphere around the team? Well, I sat down with them early in the season after uh, after the women had just, you know, knocked off Canisius in, in, in an overtime you know, an amazingly, an amazing overtime game. Um, and, you know, the two of them, they come from New York City, uh, you, know, you know, Queens and, and Brooklyn. That grit. Respectively, you know, right. it's, that, it's that grit. Right. It's that innate sense of, of, of yearning for competition. Right. And the two of them are, are really bringing that right now. And it really is the perfect year to do it because, like I said, the Atlantic 10 is so wide open that they're going to get some upset victories. And that's only going to help their development moving forward. So the two of them, you know, they really are poised. They're mature. Um, they're going in there and they're taking on some of the best, you know, you know, some, you know, high level defenders, you know, at, you know, against St. Louis and Duquesne. I mean, my God, they, they gave Duquesne some, some nightmares, um, only losing 60 to 54 right. in, you know, on, in their Atlantic 10 opener at the Riley Center on, on the fifth. So. Um, it's really encouraging to see them come so close, and it's only going to make this team better moving forward. They are 100% the cornerstones um, for for Bona women's basketball to get back to the days of the Jim Crowley era. Right, right. Um, and you know, we we're talking about that backcourt, but there's also maybe not the backcourt, but two promising freshmen on the men's team that are, are really you know picking it up now, and yeah. that's in Kyle Lofton and Shuno Shuni. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's with the freshmen now that, I, again, I think is making some of these struggles in the early going a little bit easier to swallow that, okay, maybe they lose, uh, you know, a, a double overtime game to, to, to Vermont, a game they really had a chance to win. But then you look, you know, the way that Kyle Lofton play, uh, plays all 50 minutes. Same thing with the Dayton right. game and, and his effort there. So uh, you're starting to see them come along you're starting again to see it come together so uh, you know for me kind of one of the turning points in that regard was the UMass game that was their first road win last week I went out you know and, and, and did that game out in Amherst um, of course the weather was terrible it was pouring down rain with a sheet of ice for the entire drive but I make it out there and here, here you have a situation where now you've got all three of these freshmen in the starting lineup now that Dominic Welch is back 
Um, looks like he's kind of regained his, his form a little bit. Now he's in the starting lineup. So you've got uh, a Bonnet team now where you've got three freshmen in the starting lineup. They're the only team in the league right now with starting three freshmen. And these guys combine for 43 of Bonnet's 61 points in that game. Up until the very last minute, right. Bonnet's three freshmen had scored just as much as UMass as a, as a team going into the last two minutes. But you've got, you know, Kyle Lofton um, was just exceptional. He had his career at 24 that game. He was so aggressive from the start. Um, Dominic Welsh had some big three-pointers to help get some separation toward the end there. And, and uh, Oshun only had eight points in that game, but you could, it was another example of you can just see the traits that Coach Schmidt has been talking about, right. you know, since he's right. been here. Um, and so, you know, when I asked Schmidt after the game, you know, we, we talk about how bright the future is with these guys because they're only going to get better. better and better. But in the here and now, these three freshmen just scored 43 of your 61 points in an A-10, you know, conference road win. Right. You know, that not, they're, they're, they're starting to get that production now from these guys. Um, and so if, you, if you're having that, um, you know, you, you, you really have to be pleased with sort of the effort you're seeing now. And again, you're, you're just going to expect to count on that, and, and, and these guys are going to see it, experience, and just, and just get better. Right, and you know, over the, the last two games, and even in conference play, uh, you know, Kyle Lofton has been averaging 41 minutes and you know, uh, it's it's unheard of from a freshman, especially playing for Mark Schmidt, a freshman, uh, you know, having 41 minutes, averaging 41 minutes in a game. You know, I would mean, talk about that. Uh, what what is, you know, what what was so different from this year that you know what's so different than Kyle Lofton that you know we just haven't seen from other guys before. Kyle Lofton's fun to watch. Right? Plain and simple. <laughs> Plain and simple. Of, he's a lot of fun to watch, and again, it's like when you when you see. Um, you know, just his development as we're going along here. A couple of losses along the way don't really, um, you know, detract from from what's going on here. Um, you know, this is a guy I think that, that people thought was um, going to uh, be a player at some point, be a, a, a contributor, but I think he's probably exceeding expectations. He's maturing a lot for yeah. him in the early right. going. I mean, to have a freshman point guard for any Division One team uh, to, to ask of him, what he's doing right now, um, he he's he's a total Iron Man. I think right. he set a total yeah. of one minute in <laughs> seven conferences. It's absurd. Which is insane. It's just absurd to think of with the Schmidt team, and I think it shows something that, you know, it's with the caliber of kids he's bringing in from year one. It's it's so different from years past because, you know, you've got Kyle and Oshun who are just so much more advanced than. Probably some freshmen in, in years past at, at this point that they are getting these these minutes right away. Yeah, yeah it used to be that uh, it, was, it was very difficult for a Schmidt freshman to get on the floor because they weren't quite ready to be out there yet. It was more of a development thing. A guy like Deion Wright, who, who ends up becoming kind of close to an all-conference caliber player, didn't even see the floor as a freshman because he wasn't his development wasn't quite there yet. Now they've got some guys who are a little bit further along right off the bat. That, that he's comfortable having out there, but even still, to 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 um, see Lofton and a guy like Oshun doing what they're doing now in the early going is pretty pretty remarkable. To again for a freshman point guard with that kind of responsibility, uh, to have the ball in their hands at all times, to never sit, to be facing you know Lofton's performance against UMass came against one of the most aggressive in your face physical defenses that they'll see all year. He handled it. They started pressing him, you know, full court toward the he handles all that, still comes up with twenty four, still hits some huge shots to make sure that they they win that game. Um, and uh, it's 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 special and again it's almost like you're 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 spoiled a little bit because you go from uh, a guy like Jalen Adams who was another, you know, he was really kind of the first that changed the uh, the tone a little bit in terms of freshmen Let's being get some, able to get, get some more right time. on the floor. He started right from the get-go and obviously goes on to have the, the career that he does. And you're thinking, okay, um, you know, you, you, you can't really expect, uh, you know, anything like that. Or you can't expect the next guy to just to, to come in and, right. and uh, 
but but you know Lofton's coming in. He's really kind of establishing himself as as, as the guy again right off the bat. You know they've they, they uh, Lofton has assumed that role of uh, being the the, the 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 vocal point of that team. You know the leader, um, and I think you've seen that within the last two road games, averaging 22 points. Three rebounds, two assists, earning a ten player of the uh, rookie of the week. Uh, long overdue, right? Long overdue, but Big time. And, and and between Shun and Kyle, they're the first pair of Bonnies to both win rookie of the week. And uh, the same you know, we season, talk yep. about this young core, this freshman group, and how you know how far they've you know come in this little time, and for them to already get that honor is, is something special to talk about for sure. Um, yeah. Especially with Dominic Welch coming back from that injury, we're starting to see a little bit more of you know. With, him getting more comfortable with his shot, right. you know, hitting those threes, uh, adding another element to that team, for sure. Yeah. Moving along to the Rhode Island game camp, right? What can we expect tomorrow? It's an early start. Tell early us start. Little, tell us why it's an early start. Well, it's an early start because they typically have these 11 o'clock, 10:30 a.m. games um, to uh, bring kids and different and, and different type of community people to these games. Um, it's some of the best crowds that they see over the course of the season. But um, I asked. I asked Jesse Fleming yesterday when I sat down with him what it was, you know, is it tough to play that early? And he goes, well, I think it has its pros and cons, but, you know, they've already played one game like that this season at Akron and played them very close all throughout. So he goes, I think, he, I think you know, the girls are able to get their, you know, they're, they're juiced up in the morning and so, they're, and so they're able to, you know, bring it that early in the morning. Um, this Rhode Island team, it's a it's a program that has struggled mightily in the past couple of years. Typically, you know, falling at the bottom of the league. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, in imploring you know scouting techniques and whatnot year, uh, during the non-conference season, um, Jesse Fleming got a call from Jim Crowley, right. whose Providence team lost to Rhode Island earlier this right. you know in, in the non-conference. Now Providence, um, you know, thirteen and eight, and they're playing very well in the Big East right now. But they lost to this Rhode Island team, so you know this was kind of Crowley's warning to, to Fleming: don't think of them as a pushover. They have some, you know, they have some girls that are going to be able to score on you. Um, so hopefully, you know, this this will give them an opportunity. It, it, it should be a game that they win, um, but you know, it, it'll ho hopefully help them get back on track. And then after this Rhode Island game on Sunday, they host George Mason again, who they who they mounted a 32 point fourth quarter against to beat them in you know their second 8-10 eight, eight, game of the season. So they've got an important stretch here. It's a little bit easier of a stretch because they did start off the season with Duquesne, who was picked to finish first, and Dayton, who was picked to finish second in the Atlanta 10 conference over the course of the first couple games. Um, and they did drop a game to St. Louis, who, in my opinion, has you know one of the top two or three coaches in the conference in Lisa Stone. So you know this will be an important stretch now to see what this team is made of. And they're feeling like they're finally putting it together enough to Fleming's liking that they'll be able to compete now moving forward. Right, and you know, the Bonnies have had URI's number, winning 11 straight uh, against them uh, whenever they play. Right. Uh, you know, Danielle McLore had a great game against them last year, the last time they played in February, it's a 12 point deficit. Uh, she ended up having 17 points, yep. eight rebounds. She had a huge game. Besides the backcourt, where does it start with the Bonnies? Where? Who, where do they generate the most of you know their points and uh, you know the leadership? Well, right now, it's McKenna Maycock, of course. That's that's kind of taking that vocal leader role. Um, she's really had that role the last two seasons since Jesse got the job. But you know, Mariah Ruff was obviously the you know the elder right. statesman on the team. But McKenna, you know, having grown up in Jamestown and watching her play at Randolph, um, you know, you see that skill level, and you know, she's 100% doing it right now. Fleming has said that he's wanted her to shoot more, not be that playmaker as, as much as she has been in the past. Uh, and the results are great. She has been shooting incredibly well. She's leading this team, averaging 10.8 10 points. Um, so, you know, it, it starts with her. And then, of course, as I mentioned, it, it goes down to that backcourt of, of, of Johnson and Francis. Johnson, A.J. Johnson was selected for, along with McKenna, was selected for the A10 weekly honor roll this week. Um, Asia A. Uh, according to Jesse, has been, you know, they, they have an internal way of rating their players after each game. Um, it's stuff that you don't really find on the box score. It's going after loose balls, etc. And that A. Jeanne has been, the, after the last two games, um, she's had the most points 
on that rating scale internally. So they're very impressed with what she's doing. I would imagine that she'll also be um, a force tomorrow, as will Deja Francis, who has, who has taken it down a couple games. Um, but if she gets an opportunity to shoot, she will shoot. And I think a player that almost gets overlooked is Deja Logan. Uh, right. She, she had a great game last uh, uh, the last time they played, 16 points, right. three, uh, four three-pointers. Um, you know how uh, she's knocking on the door of that big game. Right, and know? that's what Jesse told me heading into that UMass game. He, he said, you know, we're, we think she's just about there. And for her to go for 16 points, um, you know, 16 points Saturday is, is, is incredibly important. Um, she can shoot incredibly well. I relate her almost to that Adrice Taki role of that glue guy type yeah. type role. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it's, it's overlooked. It's overlooked, but it's, but she is that she is that glue, and it's a good feeling to know that she's stacking the stat sheet along with you know the guys you expect us to. Uh, the, the girls you expect to, to lead in scoring. Right. Um, and he, you know, he said she was right on that precipice, and hopefully she'll be able to continue that now in this stretch coming up. You know, JP, we talk about the inexperience of this young Bonnie's team. Uh, you know, we, we can only get, we know that it only is going to get better. Um, but where does it start? You know, it, obviously with the freshmen, but how vital is the roles of Nelson Caputo, Courtney, LD, the guys that have been there? Um, you know, proving for this team right now. Well, it, it's it's going to be a combination of, of those things, and I think we're finally starting to see that unfold a little bit. How uh, they're still, you know, a little banged up. Just when they were starting to get right. healthy again, they obviously lose Nelson and Jalen Poison to the head injuries. Um, Nelson came back in that last game against Richmond, hit a huge three yes. at the end of that game to to uh, you know help put Bonna over the top. Um, Jalen, we're still not certain when he might be back, but it's a it's a combination of again getting healthier, um, getting those veteran guys to where they need to be. I think one of the big reasons that they've won for their last six is because Ladarian Griffin is starting to play like himself right. again. Um, Courtney is uh, you know there there could be some stretches of inconsistencies, but overall I think is certainly playing like an all conference. Player right. right now, you know, while simultaneously bringing these these young guys along, and now to me, you've got the starting lineup that you want to play. Right. That's something that I asked Schmidt about going into the Richmond game. We we've seen you know a couple games in a row now. You've got the three freshmen with Courtney and right. Ladarian. Is this you know really the starting right. lineup? Right. You think you know that that you're going to ride this out now? And he basically said, I'm comfortable. With these guys, um, they need to keep proving it in yep. practice. But if they're going to play as well as they are right now, they're going to stay in those right. roles, and they and they should be. This is the lineup I think going forward. Um, and, and so you know, they still need to get uh, some other contributions here because too often it might only be uh, those starters right. or right. three of those right. five starters doing everything. You know, the bench has been a little bit of an issue um, in that in that UMass game. They had three guys off the bench and, you know, for a total of maybe 18, 19 minutes with Amadi, right, right, you know, right. getting some right. time. Um, so that part of it still needs to come along. But, um, you, you know, they need to get something from Nelson. They need to get a little bit more from Amadi inside. These other guys need to continue to do what they're doing. And, and yeah, I think this is a team that absolutely will be able to, you know, to compete over these last, what, 11 games in conference play. You know, looking forward to the big matchup Friday night. Uh, obviously, it doesn't have the same, you know, uh, anticipation as last year's triple overtime thriller was. Uh, you know, there was a lot more at stake. But what can we expect February 1st, Friday night, at the Riley Center on ESPN2? That's, that's the, the big one. I mean, right. we, we, we talked about We did, did a little dry run yesterday just right. to make right. sure that we were even capable <laughs> of being in front of people. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, we talked about how there really is kind of a discernible lack of, of buzz this year. And that's going to happen when you get off to a one and five start right. and you lose five in a row at the end of conference play. You're four and nine. Um, you know, it, it didn't. It doesn't have the just the, the, the overall anticipation of last year when every game was huge. Every right. game was as big as it was, especially when you're going into 
you know, that 13 game winning streak, you need every single one of them, and they mean so much. It's huge. And yeah, absolutely. You had that this year, but this game on Friday is going to be that game with some buzz. I think it's a it's a Friday night ESPN2 game. Right. It's a rematch of that triple overtime classic from last year right. against Davidson. Students, you know, will be here for it. I know they're doing the whiteout. Right. Thing. Uh, right, which they did last year against Rhode Island for right. the same Friday night game. Yeah, and, and uh, um, you know, it's just the, the next opportunity, uh, the next kind of litmus test to prove just how far they've come on, just where they stand right now. Because um, to me, Davidson is a team that's probably going to be right there, you know, close to the right. top at the end. Um, you know, very, very tough team. So, um, you know, you got a, a, a Bonnet team now that's back over 500 in conference play, coming off two right. road wins. Um, you know, the, the, the Friday night thing, that's like the 8-10s Monday night football. Right. We talked about that. Right. Bonnet. Right. Now it is. is the team that gets an opportunity right. to, to do that, showcase themselves a little bit. And it's hard uh, to win at the Riley You've got Schmidt, you know, Schmidt's coming back off his 200th win. Right. You know, he's two wins away from becoming the the all-time winningest coach right. in, in Bonnet history, so they're 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 starting to become a little bit more, you know, buzz with with what's going on going into this last you know month month or so of the season. That's all we got for today. There's a lot of stuff to be talked about. Next Tuesday we'll be in the same spot. All three of us uh, will be talking about the Davidson game, the Rhode Island game, all yep. the games ahead. What's next? Uh, I'm so excited to do this with you guys and you know yeah, it's gonna be great. get the opportunity uh, to talk on us basketball. A lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. A lot of fun. And right, we want to hear from Yeah, the fans. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to, you know, uh, hit us up personally on our social media or the SBU TV, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram page, and we'll gladly be answering fan questions after, you know, the end of our show. Um, I think we want to make that its own you know, second, second yeah, right. We hear from you, answer what we, you know, what we can. Right. So, thank you guys for tuning in. This is the Bonnet Beat. I'm Rob Barbieri, JP Butler, Cameron Hurst. We'll see you next week. <laughs>